I, I'd like to talk about lexicographic preferences. So uh, the definition, if you remember, I define it in the lecture videos. Um, well, in, in this simpler example, I am going to assume that the set of alternatives are basically the unit square, all right? So basically I am looking at this uh, two-dimensional space and this is zero, zero point. This is one, zero, right? This is uh, zero, one. Um, so basically my set of alternatives, well, including the boundaries as well. So everything in this unit square. So this is basically my set capital X, all right? So whenever I say an alternative, uh, uh, say x is in x, it's basically a vector. So x is, let's denote it by x1, x2. If I pick another vector, y, all right? So this is basically another ve vector, y1, y2, right? And so the lexicographic preferences, sorry, uh, compares x and y in this fashion. x is at least as good as y, all right? So this is our notation. Uh, and I read it as at least as good as. Um, but as I sort of said, uh, you know, uh, some people prefer to, some textbooks prefer to denote it as X, R, Y, uh, at least as good as. Um, I don't know why R. Uh, uh, well. So X is at least as good as Y if, uh, this is a definition, so therefore if basically means if and only if, all right? So in definition, I'm defining something, so, uh, uh, you know, when I use if, I basically means this statement is equivalent, uh, the truth value of this statement is equivalent to the truth value of the second statement that I'm going to give you now. So x is at least as good as y, if and only if the following is true. Um, well, what is this? So x1, oops, is greater than x, uh, sorry. x1 greater than y1. Remember, x is x1, x2, and y is y1, y2. So x1 is greater than uh, y1, or x1 is, I don't know why this is writing uh, weird, x1 is equal to y1, um, and x2 is greater than or equal to y2. All right? Can you guys see x1, x2, etc.? Okay. Yeah. Did somebody say something? Okay, so I'm assuming that you guys can read it. Uh, so, uh, again, the lexicographic preferences uh, basically uh, uh, compare vectors. So it is uh, what we do in the, 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 the comparison the dictionaries do, right? Or more intuitively, think it this way. Um, so I have two universities or two job offers. Let's, let's call it job offers, all right? It makes more sense for me at least. So uh, let's say I have two job offers, uh, you know, job X, job Y. And the thing is, I, I need to choose one of them, obviously. I can't, I can't work in two uh, places. So I am basically, uh, what I'm basically doing is uh, sort of a priority list. Uh, so the, 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 the most important uh, priority, uh, I mean, the most important uh, thing for me is the location, all right? And then the second important uh, uh, point is the salary. Well, obviously, this can go on and on, right? The third dimension is like the benefits. The fourth dimension, you know, the uh, future opportunities. The fifth dimension... Um, you know, whatever. So you can basically increase the dimensions of comparison. So, but let's keep it simple. So I, let's suppose I have two dimensions, location and salary. But the thing is, location is more important for me than salary. All right. So, well, why is that? Well, let's suppose my wife is already working in Toronto. And so I don't want to move to another city or to another country. So therefore, I want to pick a job uh, which is in sort of GTA area or somewhere close to it, okay? So 
For that reason, when I sort of decide whether I should choose X or Y, I first look at their location. So if X1 is, for example, Toronto, which is exactly what I want, my priority, and YY is, is, is in, I don't know, uh, Vancouver, all right, so the decision is simple. Well, I'm going to go for uh, X, although the salary is not that important, okay? Well, then... Uh, let's suppose both of them are in the GTA area, but, but the one is in downtown, the other one is around York region. So I have to commute a little bit more for, the, for one, but it's very close to my house for the other. Well, so nevertheless, the criteria that, you know, the, uh, the, the, the city, the location is, is, is what I'm preferring. So X1 and Y1 are in that sense equal to each other. Well, then I'm going to jump to my second uh, criteria. What about the salary? Is, is the salary, so the, the first component, there is no winner. What about the second component? Is the salary better? Well, maybe Y2 is better. Well, in that case, I'm gonna say, hey, Y is at least as good as X or, or better than, all right? Um, so that's it, that's basically how we compare it. Obviously, this is not always a reasonable way to this, uh, sort of compare you know, two things. Well, why is that so? Well, because maybe X, and X is, I don't know, in, in Toronto, and Y is in Vancouver, so the location is not what I want, but maybe the, the, the salary you're gonna get in the second job, Y, I mean, is, let's say, 200K, versus the salary in X is, I don't know, something much less, of uh, 50K, all right? Just exaggerating the numbers. So, are you gonna give up you know, the four times more salary simply because it's uh, located in Vancouver? Right, so it's a good question. So this guy is not making sort of a, a trade-off uh, between uh, Y and y, Y1 and Y2, right? I mean, there is no uh, sort of uh, substitution between these two goods. It's like either X, if it is not, I'm going to kill everything else. Uh, well, it's too harsh sometimes. Um, okay, so so this is it. This is what lexicographic preferences are in this very simple domain of, of, of alternatives. So the first question I'm going to uh, ask is, uh, first of all, is this binary? So this is a binary relation, uh, but you know, in the lecture notes, uh, we basically said it's a preference relation. Is it really? I mean, is it a, a transitive binary relation? Is it complete? Is it reflexive? Uh, so let's prove them. And so therefore, uh, see how we prove a statement like this. Um, as far as I remember, that was actually one of my exam questions uh, uh, last year. Um, so let's, let's do it. So transitivity. Well, let's start with the simplest one, right? The complete uh, reflexiveness. It's, it's simplest. So reflexive. So, is a lexicographic binary relation reflexive? First of all, uh, remember the definition of reflexive binary relation. A binary relation is reflexive means for every alternative in my set of alternatives, X is at least as good as X, okay? All right, so in my uh, set of alternatives, well, X means a vector, right? So don't forget that. So a vector is at least as another vector. Well, how is that possible? Well, remember, uh, we must have either the first components satisfy x1 greater than x2, strictly greater than x2. Is it the case? I'm sorry, this is not x2. This is x1 itself. So the first components, is the first component, component of x1 strictly greater than x1? No. Well, then I need to look at the second condition. When they are the same, x1 is equal to x1, yep. Well, then I must have x2 is greater than or equal to x2. Is this true? Yes, it is true. Well, then check. This is basically direct proof, all right? That there's, there's nothing to, I mean, there's no point of uh, making a, a proof by contradiction. So basically that's it. So therefore, x is at least as good as x, as, as simple as this, all right? Any question? So it's a reflexive binary relation. What about completeness? Well, a preference, I'm sorry, a binary relation is complete means 
uh, when I choose x and y, any x and y in my set of alternatives, x is at least as good as y, either x is at least as good as y or y is at least as good as x, meaning you should be able to compare any two vectors. Is it the case? So pick any x and y, all right? So x, remember, is something x1, uh, x2, and y is a vector y1, y2. Remember, they are in 0, 1 uh, square. I'm sorry, uh, the unit square. So the thing is, what I know, uh, for any two vectors, uh, we have the following, right? Uh, so either x1 is greater than or equal to y1, all right? Um, if it is not the case, that means otherwise y1 is strictly oops, greater than x1, right? I mean, when you compare the first components of a vector, so when, when I have a unit square like this, so this is x, uh, uh, x1, this is x2, right? So, uh, so when I pick a vector x here, so this is x1, this is x2, and then another vector y here, this is y1, this is y2. So basically either x1 is greater than y1 or y1 is greater than x1 because they are just real numbers. And any real number, uh, any two real number are, are comparable, right? Either one is greater than the other or the, the, the converse is true. Uh, both cannot be true, right? and, and neither, uh, I mean, uh, x1 is not uh, greater than y1, y1 is not greater than x1. The, the, such a statement cannot be true either. So therefore, we have either this or, instead of otherwise, let's just say or this. Same for y2, I mean, x2 and y2 are their real number, so therefore either x2 is greater than or equal to y2 or y2 is strictly greater than uh, x2. Okay, there is no third possibility. So therefore, I have um, four possibilities, right? Uh, you know, it could be the case that, so let me sort of write it as a case, uh, uh, cases. So the case one is basically, it could be the case that uh, x1 is greater than or equal to y1 and uh, x2 is greater than or equal to y2. Basically this and this happening. So these are, remember, for each um, dim dimension or for each coordinate, there are two cases, all right? So there are two coordinates, and for each coordinate, there are two cases. So two to the power of two, there are four possibilities. Right? So therefore, one possibility is this. The other one is x1 is greater than or equal to y1, and uh, y2 greater than x2. Case three, um, what is that? y1 strictly greater than x1, and x2 is greater than or equal to y2, and then case 4, the final case, I mean y1 is greater than x1 and y2 is greater than x2, all right? So now let's sort of dig into those cases. So if this is the case, so remember I am comparing x1, x2 vector with y1, y2 vector. So if x1 is greater than or equal to y1, all right? Well, if it is strictly greater than y1, I know that x is at least as good as y. Done. If they're equal, all right, well then in this case, I'm gonna look at x2 and y2. Well, x2 is greater than or equal to y2. So therefore, in any case, I can conclude because these two are true, x is at least as good as y. So that's it. So if case one is true, well then I must have x is at least as good as y. Good. What if case two is true? I don't know which one of those cases are true, right? but what if the second case is true? Well, if x1 is greater than or equal to y1, hmm, if x1 is strictly greater than y1, I'm done. x is at least as good as y. Very good. But if they're equal, I'm gonna look at the y's. All right, hmm, 
Hmm. So here it says y2 is greater than x2. All right. So here I have to. So if y2 is greater than x2, however, be, be careful. Uh, here it might be the case that x1 is uh, strictly greater than y1 uh, versus. So let me write it this way. X. What I'm saying is there are two possible scenarios and two possible scenarios may lead to two different conclusions. So be careful. So I split this case into sub cases where x1 is strictly greater than y1 and y2 strictly greater than x2. The second sub case x1 is equal to y1, right? Um, and y2 is greater than x2. Uh, so you'll see to two different possible case scenarios will lead to two uh, different conclusions. So here, uh, if these two are true, if x1 is uh, uh, more than y1, I don't really need to look at the uh, x2 and y2. I'm just going to say x is at least as good as y. That's it. Well, what if this is true? Because I don't know which one of those cases or subcases are true. These are sort of a, uh, remember, I am trying to prove an if then statement, basically. All right. And I, I have basically four assumption for conditional derivation, right? If this is true, I need to show this. If this is true, I need to show, I need to show either this or, I mean, either this or this. Uh, one of them must be true. So here, if x1 and y1 are the same, I need to look at the second component. Here, the second component, y2, I mean, is greater than x2. So what does that mean? That means the y is at least as good as x. All right, so y is better, not x. So therefore, in either case, under case two, I'm going to have either x is at least as good as y or y is at least as good as x. But I will never conclude uh, neither one of those is true. All right, that's, that's the idea. So keep going. The third case, uh, we don't really need any subcases here. So the third case is simple. Y1 is greater than X1. All right. So there's strict inequality. So that I don't really need to look at the second case here. I mean the second condition or the second coordinate. So because the Y vector has a higher uh, uh, component uh, than the X vector in the first dimension, like the city, Example, the job offer. So Y1 is Toronto, X1 is sort of British Columbia. Um, so therefore, uh, I'm going to prefer or think Y is at least as good as X. All right. And then finally, in the case four, uh, again, Y1 is greater than X1. So who cares about uh, how I rank X2? I'm going to still say Y is at least as good as X. Okay. Um, obviously, you can do this proof in a shorter way, meaning sort of combine the, some of those cases together. Um, but I just wanted to do it as as uh, as straightforward as possible. All right. So these are all the possible scenarios you should be looking at, and for each scenario should lead to either this or this, because that's the definition of uh, a, a relation, a binary relation being complete. So what I did prove is the following. For any x and y I took, remember, I did not specify the value of x and y. Some people do it, uh, uh, I mean, when I ask this in sort of an exam or something, they just give me numbers, right? 1, 0 versus, they just pick randomly uh, 3, 5. So they say, well, 3, 5 is at least as good as 1, 0 because 3 is higher than 1. So therefore, it's reflex uh, complete. Uh, well, that's true. You know, 3, 5 vector is at least as good as 1, 0 vector, although this is not in unit uh, uh, square. Uh, but the thing is, this doesn't mean that this binary relation is a complete because you have to show me that uh, x at least as good as y or y at least as good as is x true for any x, y you pick in your uh, sort of uh, alternative set. And you just pick me two, right? But there are infinitely many of them. Obviously, you cannot pick infinitely many of those alternatives and, and sh you know, show that, you know, one is greater. The thing is, you just do it this way. Okay. Um, this is how we prove 
the uh, lexicographic preferences are complete. Any question, guys?